Hello and welcome to another episode of A Closer Look. In this segment, we will highlight the Safe Children Healthy Mothers, or SCHM, project aimed at reducing stunting among children ages 0 to 5 years, reduce family violence, and promote healthy practices in the communities. In addition to the establishment of mother support groups in the communities to promote maternal infant and young child practices, the implementation of nutrition-sensitive projects by the community development committees was another way the SCHM used to promote healthy practices in the communities. This was seen recently during the newly commissioned aid post in Sarkim village in North Wasera local level government, Wasera Gawi district in Isipik province. Tamara Agavi reports. The CDCs are made up of village councillors, women and youth representatives. The CDCs were taken through the Community Action Planning or CAP process to improve their knowledge on appropriate nutrition practices, identify health and nutrition issues, as well as solutions and finally prioritize, plan and implement one project. In agreement with the CDCs, the SCHM provided a portion of the startup resources and materials, while the CDCs and community members took care of the remaining cost of the project. <laughs> Save the Children through the Safe Children Healthy Mothers aims to create peer support groups of pregnant and lactating women and mothers of children under the age of five to increase knowledge and improve pre- and postnatal maternal infant and child nutrition and feeding practices. Community grants as the community aid post will work within communities to increase their support for healthier nutrition behaviors. Ronnie Inaha, project manager with the Save the Children, elaborated on the nutrition project and the aid post. Um, Papua New Guinea, especially along all places where um, service, you mean need to deliver him, to support him agenda, plan long government. NGOs, me plan come, you mean no come because you mean like I'm delivering program or you mean like I'm visiting people or you mean like I'm looking palace or NGOs, especially save the children now, me plan come start work long I see big, you mean being in the agenda of the government, he got plan. You mean align him all activities or work, like you mean being in big plan of the government, now you mean delivering all programs for like you mean. Inside the, this last specific program, now you mean running long Sarkim and um, nutrition program. In Sarkim community, the CDC conducted a community sensitization on nutrition learnings from the training and agreed to construct a house marathon for iron supplementation of pregnant women and minor treatment of childhood illnesses like fever, respiratory infections, and minor infections. The community leaders liaise with the district health team for medicine supplies. Ronald Naki, project coordinator with Save the Children, gave a highlight of their projects in the district and province. So what we tell the community, uh, PHA team is that uh, what we build there is not belongs to Save the Children. We normally supported them, and that is part of the part of our part of our strategy to strategy to fill the gaps, especially in terms of health, uh, health services. We see where the lack of uh, services are, and uh, where the gaps are, we, feel, we, we try to step in to fill those gaps up. So that's one of the things that uh, uh, provincial health authority and district health uh, authority, they work close, close with us to support them in make sure every communities in the rural areas at least they receive health services in their communities. Other community implemented projects that save the children are also working closely with communities, a kitchen gardens for households, fish farming, chicken farming and water tanks for safe drinking water. 
Lazarus Kopi Diktu, a local from the Sarkim community in North Wasara LLG, said that the community needs a health aid post due to the distance that is from their village to the nearest aid post. It took 10 long. Save the children coming here because before people have been finding hard through long. Oh my God, I'm beginning. Oh my God, bell now. Oh, I got delivering beginning long half. It's a pain hard through go here. Now it's a time to like, come now. Save the children coming here now. Put in the like, hospital or legally get post and look at it now. Or some sub health center. I'm good for more long. I'm about two years about the mama. I'm just like passing long. Saving because time flat is a gum. What a tight little slap. I'm like hard to cross in the slap. I'm long way distant to go to Kaukia and the Bambisa. Also, in that time, I said to the children now, you come in. I play I'm a master. You play come in. Because I play support in my mother. I'm walking in the sky. Legally, I'm going to some of the time. I said, put down the tulip, I'm down. I'm looking bed in the car. Also, I'm going to play I'm a master. I'm going to play with you. Overall, the CDC engagement has demonstrated solid community participation, strong community ownership, and effective sustainability. The SEHM project is supported by the Australian government through the Australian NGO Cooperation Program, or ANCP. The district and provincial health authorities gave assurance of support to the newly commissioned aid post as well. Speaking to the community during the commissioning, Stephen Massey, the district health manager, assured the community that the health aid post is in the provincial plans. A community health worker will also be recruited as well. So this is minimum sarkim inside the plan, the PHA, only capturing you inside the plan blow. When them budget no you, when them something time will give him lo mibla, but mibla shindan took the one to leaders, make him by mibla sawe when them funding lo mibla, when them support lo mibla, come lo help him this la facility. Through us and this la project, Amy been come up, lo side lo partners lo mibla, all to all by putting house marasin. So after lo mibla no come la visit lo mibla one lo kaugia, me took the one to my see lo kaugia na me took him into mibla must go na look him this la place sarkin past them because. On PHA, on capturing them inside, on plain blow, on the middle of the street, on blade post. We said he helped him, long kid up him, this blouse, how sick. Somebody long old, old doctor, now old nurse, now old Marasin Mary, long walk boom on them, long all right him, old man Mary, he got sick. Help him, old sick man Mary, now old beginning, he stopped on this blouse, how sick. When I'm out, I'm looking now. Sana blow here, I'm minimum. I'm I'm not finished blow. Pack black stand here. No display, but PHA by I'm looking black stand him. Go in up and by meet him. Display standard. El post inside the community. So all time display. I got representative blow me blow no ESP PHA and staff. When I'm back, come up with some custodian. The display service was provided inside the display community. So by me give him key. Go to representative blow PHA. Sir Tagora, you can come forward. Now by you cut him ribbon. You mean ready to sing out? Hip hip! Hip hip! The program is supported by the Australian government for four years and is aimed at reducing the prevalence and impact of chronic malnutrition or stunting among children from birth to 59 months and to develop social norms that promote zero tolerance of any form of violence against women and children.
We now take a quick break and when we return, we highlight the current runway upgrade at Kagamuga Airport in Western Highlands Province. Welcome back to A Closer Look. The National Airport Corporation, or NAC, have explained to the media the immediate need to upgrade the runway of the Kagamuga Airport in Mount Hagen, which is to ensure the safety of the travelling public and operations of the airliners. NAC took the media to give a first-hand report on the maintenance exercise currently underway. This maintenance on the Kagamuga runway is set to be completed on the 25th of this month. In this segment, we also identify some of the critical funding issues and debt legacy issues that NEC has with the airline operators. After reviewing the works done at the Kagamuga Airport runway by the National Airport Corporation, they have identified a pavement failure. Keeping in mind the safety of the aircraft operations, NACS reduced the runway length and have engaged an independent contractor to rectify the pavement issue. According to the Managing Director Engineering, Simon Roia, this is due to inadequate compaction in terms of the shielding works done during the initial upgrade, which ended in February of this year. It's still been uh, coming out from the, from the pavement as a result of the impact from the aeroplanes. If it's not attended to, then the failure extends out, combined with wet weather and all that. And that would, that would be a result of a lack of compaction of the pavement, inadequate uh, compaction, uh, some issues in terms of uh, ceiling works. So when that occurs, we have to quickly attend to it. But in this case, uh, attending to these repair works took a while because of the, um, uh, we were trying to find the right time to, to do the repair works. Uh, and whilst finding the right time in terms of um, the peak period, like prior to Prior to coming and doing this work, it was independence. So that's something that pushed us to defer that. And whilst it, it was deferred, the, the failures started spreading out. Yeah. It is understood that the NAC or the national government are not paying for this repair exercise. However, the previous contractor engaged in the first maintenance have engaged an independent contractor to rectify this pavement issue under the Civil Aviation Development Investment Program. This exercise cost approximately 1 million kina. According to the Chief Operating Officer Manuai Kamaten, the repair exercise started on the 2nd of October. He further elaborated on the funding that was involved in this maintenance exercise. Before the initial defects liability period ceased, we found the pavement failing. So at the, when we concluded on the, on the pavement repairs, that basically extends the contract, uh, the defects liability period again by another 12 months, starting from the time the repairs was completed. The contractor is, uh, was tasked to do the job, but I, I think they've, uh, they've, they've, they've agreed to, for us to look for a, a, another contractor to come and do the works. And uh, we will use the money from the performance bond, which is kept by the bank. Uh, so that money is currently being used to meet the cost of doing the repair works. This repair exercise will cease on the 15th of this month and normalcy will return at Kagamuga. According to NAC, all the funding for the upgrading of major airports derived from the CADI Program 1. Wellington Warren, the program director for CADIP, explains further. Uh, so, CADIP 1 ended in 2021, November. CADIP 2 was signed in December last year. Uh, currently, we're waiting for the subsidiary loan agreements to be signed between NAC and uh, Treasury. Uh, and that's set to be complete by 2028. And under CADIP 2, we are covering 
five major airports or five major regional airports. Uh, one of them being Geni, uh, then Kiunga, uh, Hoskins, Uwek, and Aropa. It has been highlighted that the airport still needs upgrade to accommodate the Air New Guinea's new fleet, the A220. However, funding still remains a constraint for the National Airport Corporation and remains a challenge. The chief operating officer explains the need for the upgrade exercise. Because you see, the, th the nature of the beast that we look after, airport assets, it's the cost of maintaining it is huge. Whether you have only one aeroplane coming here or hundreds of aeroplanes coming here, the same cost of maintenance is the same. So it doesn't mean that one, if only one aeroplane comes here, the cost is low. And 20 aeroplanes come in here, the cost is high. No, the costs are the same. So that's, that's, that's the challenge that we have. So um, at this stage, we still need to get finance. Uh, at this stage, I'm not sure where we're going to get it from. That's right, for, to, in preparation for the A220. While NAC looks within their means to acquire funding to do this exercise, the Transport and Civil Aviation Minister, in a statement released this week, highlighted the huge funds that the airline operators owe to NAC and urge them to repay in a timely manner, acknowledging that NAC is under severe circumstances to maintain certain airports that have not been rehabilitated yet under the CADI program. He stated that given the refleeting program of Air New Guinea, which involves introduction of Avia aircraft, the impact on existing aircraft pavement and passenger facilities will be significant. Therefore, operators such as Air New Guinea and PNG Air need to make timely payments of the aeronautical charges in order to sustain safety of aircraft operations into NAC-controlled airports. He further emphasized that these charges are mandated under the Civil Aviation Act and are levied on the traveling public and collected by the operators. The minister revealed that he has instructed NAC management to pursue all necessary means to ensure operators pay these charges in a timely manner, including third-party involvement, such as International Air Transport Association. We take a quick breather now, and when we return after these short messages, we bring to you the recent Pilag to Silag unveiling event. You're watching a closer look. The Premier Government Institution, Pacific Institute of Leadership and Governance, has now formally changed its name from Pilag to Silag. SILAG is short for Somare Institute of Leadership and Governance. The unveiling of the plaque was done this week by the Prime Minister James Marape and was witnessed by other government dignitaries. This government institution was established in 1963 and went through various changes in terms of its name and the development of the institution to what it is today. In 1963, it was established as an administrative college. After 30 years, it was changed to Institute of Public Administration in 1993. Then, after another 24 years, it was changed to Pacific Institute of Leadership and Governance in 2017. And now, after 60 years of operation, it is changed again to Somare Institute of Leadership and Governance on the 9th of November 2023. The unveiling of the plague was done by the Prime Minister James Marape and was witnessed by government dignitaries at the now Samara Institute of Leadership and Governance in Waigani, Port Mosby. 
I am hoping this will finance this. I look forward to the time it becomes uh, Somala University, and uh, we hope it teaches public service. Good so well. Going back to how it began in 1963, SILAG Chief Executive Officer Michael Barobe will give us a brief history of what is called a bully beef back then. You don't care about the can opener, the key that allows you to enjoy the content. Often it is found in the rubbish bin. The bully beef club name is synonymous with the history of this institution and the country. Our founding fathers, including the then young Michael Sumare, talked about the future of this country while enjoying the bully beef here. The institution served many public servants who now hold various positions in the government and private sectors around the country. The Silak Board Chair Lady and the Department of Personal Management Secretary, Taiya Sansan, will give a brief on the institution's vision now and going forward. The public servants are driven by innovative learning. In our values, we must operate in robust governance framework to maintain quality of our products and services, maintain our corporate image as premier institution, promote professionalism through teamwork, provide high standard of service to our clients, and promote uh, corporate citizens' ethics and inclusive social justice. In honoring the name Somare, which will now be used in this institution, the Public Service Minister Joe Sungi acknowledged the people of Isipik province for continuously electing late Grand Chief Sir Michael Somare and the Somare family for allowing the name to be used in one of the premier institutions where he was also behind its establishment and transition. The name Somare is not just a name. It has a lot of meaning in it. It has integrity. It has humility. It has respect. It has the most important characteristics that this country has ever walked through with, that is unity. Sumara is all about uniting Papua New Guinea. This institution now carries that name. Adding on to Sumara's leadership, the Prime Minister James Marape who shared the same sentiments with Minister Sungi, said the history and legacy of late Grand Chief Sir Michael should be our inspiration going forward. Certainly, if not prominent in most part of the world, well, in the Pacific, in the Asia, in the Commonwealth, and of course in his own beloved Papua New Guinea, he is an icon of inspiration. And so it is fitting that we stand here today to witness transition of a name from Pacific, and I know there were many transitions that took place earlier, but appropriately now to be named Somalia Institute of Leadership and Governance. It is very, very fitting. It was revealed that by 2027, the Somari Institute of Leadership and Governance will get the university status. Prime Minister revealed that funding will be made available in next year's budget. Prepare this for a university that talks about efficient, effective delivery of public service to her constituent. I support the thought about elevating it to university. Is that okay? This prestigious institution serves the interest of the public servants since its establishment in 1963 by equipping them with much needed knowledge and skills, preparing them to serve the people of this country. Prime Minister James Marape revealed that reforms will be done so everyone who wants to serve in public sector should acquire certificate from SILAG. Everyone recruited into the public service will be still on probation until he or she passes 100% fully a certificate from the Somare Institute of Ladies. The Chief Secretary to Government, Ivan Pomalewu, further affirms Prime Minister's statement to make SILAG a prerequisite for public service employment. Prime Minister echoed the fact that uh, we must emphasize 
the SILA qualifications as an important as an important prerequisite to to employment in the public service, uh, promotion in the public service, and those who aspire to be leaders of the public service to be to to be inculcated with the principles and the ethics and the and the requirements of running government. Meanwhile, the public service minister Joe Sungi urged public servants to follow the footsteps of late Grand Chief Sir Michael Somare when passing out of this institution and serve the people diligently. The, 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 the late Pacific was there, but now, you, those of you now, you will be graduating, the first graduates, you will carry the name Somare. So I leave the challenge to you. When you go back to your workplaces, wherever you are in the remote part, any, any, any positions that you come from in the public service, I encourage you and make sure that I challenge you to go back with the name change and also you must change your character, your behavior, attempt to work early and commit yourself to save our people. The Prime Minister also encouraged everyone passing out of Silag going forward to embrace the Somare name and be a good servant of this nation by contributing something for the betterment of this country. That's all we have for you on this episode of A Closer Look. Join us same time next week Sunday for another episode. On behalf of the entire team, thank you for watching and have a pleasant evening.